Hey folks, Dave here. I appreciate you stopping by. And if you're new to the channel, I'll drop links to our projects and tutorials down in the description. And if you get a chance to check those out and have any issues or questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to help out. So my niece asked me to engrave something on a, uh, a picture frame. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. Uh, here it is. And so we need a, uh, a home plate. And there's, we could go out and grab a vector and do it, but we're just going to make one ourselves. So just start with uh, a polygon. And just hold your shift key down and draw it out. And let go. Now, if you have shape properties enabled, uh, you'll have a, um, a little controller on top here where you can turn the shape into whatever you would like. So if you don't see that, or if you don't see, like over here on the right, if you don't see a Shape Properties tab somewhere, uh, it can be anywhere on your screen. Then go up to Window and down to Shape Properties and be sure there's a check mark. <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. Got some uh, allergy thing kicking off today. A lot of pollen around here. So now we're going to take this triangle and just grab it and stretch it out a little more. Then we're going to grab a square off to the left. Draw out a square. It don't have to be perfect, so just draw something out. And make sure it's the same size as your triangle. And then we're going to make it look right before it's, uh, before it's over. Remember, you can use your scroll to move in and out. You can push down and move your entire canvas around. So all you want to do is make this the same size, and then we can snap it in place and weld it. So get in close so you can see and make sure you've got the same size as the triangle on both sides. That looks pretty good then you can just grab your triangle go in close and you'll see the cursor change and then you can snap it to the top of that rectangle and then we'll be able to weld it in place flip it over make it look more like a uh, home plate now if you're not able to snap you need to go up to settings and check and make sure that snap to objects, snap to grid is green, and then you'll be okay. Okay, so now we're going to select the triangle, shift select our rectangle, then go over to the left and click weld. Okay, so now we have something that looks more like a home plate. We're going to squeeze it up a little bit, make it look a little more like a home plate. Then we're going to grab it, go up to a range. We're going to flip it vertical. Then we're going to go over to offset. We're going to click offset. Uh, it's set for five inward. That's fine. I'm just going to leave it there. And then click OK. And then you can select the outer then shift, select your inner piece, then click your engrave, and then it will do an engrave around it. And my preview is on another screen, and that is not it. We'll get there. There it is. Let me make it so you can see it. And... I've got it set for fill, so it's just going to go around the edges and fill that portion and leave the center part, and that will kind of mimic the edges on the home plate. Okay, so then we want to uh, select it, group that together, 
and you can group up top or right click and group here. And then we're going to just put the letters PC inside. And I'm not selling this. Um, so it's like personal use. So I'm going to use Algerian. And I'm going to write the letters a capital P. Algerian is actually made for capital letters. And I'm going to select and then hit my tool again and do a separate C. Like so. Then click the selector tool. I'm going to pull this inside to kind of size up what we want. Uh, what she's asking for. And then I'm going to pull this C into it. Like so. Uh-oh. So the centerpiece, even though you can't see it on the home plate, is still there. So you have to work with this separately. So select that. Uh, group it together. Then we'll stretch it out a little bit. Now while it's still selected, you can work with it. But one, if you try to select it, it's like not the top layer. Okay, so we're going to leave it selected there. Shift, select the outer piece, and then click Bullseye. And that is not exactly what we want. So I'm going to move this over out of the way. I'm going to select it, put it back in there where I want it. And then Shift, Select Home Plate, and then just do a vertical center, like so. Okay, and I think that's what we want. And then underneath it, she just wants uh, 20, 24. So, we'll go back to the lettering, type out 2024. See, nothing hard about this, but uh, I'm still a beginner, so every chance I get to learn something, I do. Uh, so, I'm grouping this one together, the top part, so I can take the 2024. Now, the part of your graphic that you want to move, select it first when you're aligning. So we select the 2024, shift, select the upper portion, then go to vertical V center and it'll move it where we want it. Okay, and that's what we want. So now on this picture frame, now we can group all this together and then we can move it proportionately if we need to, like so. So now we're going to draw out a tool because the workable area is 166 millimeters by 128. I'm just going to turn that black so it's easier to see. So we can go up top, make sure your lock is off. And we're going to go width of 166. And a height of 128. And then we're going to go down to the bottom and make that a tool so there's no output for it. And then we will orient it with this. So while it's selected, go to Arrange, Rotate it, and that's our printable area. So when we go to the laser, uh, we can do a... Uh, a frame on this and then we'll be able to do this framing in the center so let's get this over here we know we've got to resize it a little bit something like that and that looks pretty good that's why it's good to do a tool and know what your workable area is so with that selected we can shift select the tool, and then hit a bullseye. And now we can also group. You can just select everything. Now, 
I, I show this a lot, but if you pull from the right, you get a green line, and all you have to do is touch, and it'll select everything, everything you touch. If you come from the left, you get a red line, and it doesn't do that because this is more selective. Uh, if you had a whole group of pieces, you were trying to just pull out something out of the center, you would have to surround it. Now, this is grouped, so it's not going to do it, but if it was ungrouped, the red would pull out that, that PC, whereas the uh, green would not. It would select everything. So we're going to select it all, group it together, and the tool has no output. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it uh, making a mark on your wood or cutting or anything. And we are just about ready to go. So I do have the fire button turned on to assist with framing. And if you'll go up to uh, device settings, click, and uh, make sure that enable laser fire button is green and laser on when framing is green. Now, I've got mine set for 0.5%. Yours may need to be something else. Click OK. And then you'll get that blue light when you're framing and be more accurate with your framing. It also appears over here on the right in this Move tab. You can see the fire button is on. And if you needed to test it, you could click and just test it. Uh, be sure to turn it back off. So, let me just orient this. I'm just going to select go to a range and rotate and we'll go to the laser and get it framed up and uh, see how this looks okay folks be right back okay I believe we're ready let's uh, frame up the outer tool and I've got the fire button on so you should see a blue light trace around the uh, outer edges here and then we'll frame up the, uh, the engraving Okay, looks good. And there's the engraving. So uh, I think we're good. So we'll send the code on over. Okay, let me clean some of this residue off of it, and uh, we'll take a closer look. Well, here's our finished project. I think it turned out pretty good. I cleaned it up with some white vinegar and a soft cloth, which does a pretty good job. That's what I usually do. If you try to do this or any of the projects or tutorials we have posted, or if you have any uh, general laser or light burn questions, just drop them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer. I really appreciate you folks taking time to watch. It does help the channel grow. Uh, just check back often for new videos. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.